Welcome to the Fed Life Podcast with Dan Seip from Serving Those Who Serve. In this podcast, Dan draws from years of financial experience to help federal employees overcome challenges that every Fed can relate to. Join us for this journey as we reach, teach, and serve to help you make the right financial decisions. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Fed Life Podcast. We are back with part two of our tax talk. I am your host, Dan Seip, and additionally, I'm the branch manager here at Serving Those Who Serve and Lee Seip and Associates. I want to, as I always do, thank you for taking the time to listen to this. And above all, thank you for your service to all of us. You are the people that are making things happen. You're getting us through this pandemic and we are blessed to have you and even more blessed to serve you. You do not hear thanks enough, but you will always hear it here. We are back again today, continuing remotely because Ed and I are trying to stay safe uh, with the incomparable, the guru, Ed Zerndorfer, as part of our ongoing mission to reach, teach, and serve you. We mentioned it on a previous podcast. I'll remind you now. I'll talk about it again at the end. You know we have live seminars. You know because of the pandemic, for your safety, Ed's safety, our safety, we had to suspend those. We are not just going to let that roll by. We are going to make sure you get the information that you need. So we have live webinars now with Ed. They're live. They are dynamic. There's great Q&A. And there's a whole suite of eight of them. It's everything that you'd get in a one-day seminar plus. So they are really fantastic. We'll talk a bit more at the end. But we have that expanded that capability where you can learn from Ed anywhere, or as I like to say, even in your bunny slippers. So at the outset, I need to say the opinions of our guest Ed Zerndorf are not the opinions of Raymond James are serving those who serve. This podcast is presented for information only and not to be intended to be taken as advice. All listeners could should consult their personal advisors before taking any action. Okay, we are back and talking taxes. And we're digging in to Ed's next article. And this is some really interesting stuff, so let's get right to it. So Ed, your next article uh, is entitled, The IRS Announces Relief for 2020 RMDs from All Retirement Accounts and Inherited IRAs. This is a big deal, so uh, let's jump in on this one. It sounds like a good thing. Oh, Dan, there's been so many changes in this, my head's spinning. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, there's been more legislation, tax legislation, pension plan legislation in 2020 I've seen this year than I've seen in 15 years. Um, the big, one of the first things that happened as a result of, um, of the um, COVID-19 is that Congress passed the CARES Act, the CARES Act, Yep. and one of the provisions of the CARES Act was the fact that if someone has a um, required minimum distribution, acquired minimum distribution, an RMD, whether it's from the TSP or from a traditional IRA, maybe somebody used to work in private industry, they have a 401k plan, maybe they Mm -hmm. have a SEP IRA, um, and they reached a certain age, namely age 70, um, then they were, they're required to take out what's called, and they're retired, they're required to take out what's called a required minimum distribution. Each year, starting the year they turn 70, um, the SECURE Act, by the way, which was passed last December, um, increased that age to age 72 for people who were born after uh, June 30th, 1949. Now, if you were born before um, uh, July 1st, 1949, you're still under the old rules, which means that you have to take an RMD every year starting the year you turn 70 and a half. So mm-hmm. here's, was, here's was Congress's rationale uh, for getting, uh, getting rid of the RMDs for 2020. And again, this was, this was part of the CARES Act. As you know, um, in, in March, the stock market really, really went to a tailspin downward. Uh, I, I do remember Dow that. Jones was uh, was like it down went down to eighteen thousand. It it, it yep. lost like it lost uh, like forty percent of its value, something like that. Um, and 
Congress said, you know, this is really not right for people over 70 and a half, that they have to take out an RMD from their retirement accounts when the value of their retirement accounts have gone down. The reason I'm saying this is because the required minimum distribution for the year 2020 is based on one's account balance as of, as of December 31st, 2019. Yep. The market was sky high on December 31st, 2019. So yep. the money they're taking out is based on the value of a retirement account that was high. But then they're taking out the money out from your retirement account here in 2020 when the value of your account has gone down. That's really, that's really rubbing salt in the wound. So Congress says, Let's, we're going to get rid of no RMDs for 2020. That's it. No, we're not going to force people to take RMDs in 2020. So that was the initial CARES Act legislation that came out on March 27, 2020. But here's the problem. There were individuals who, over the age of 70, yep. who, you know, are very conscientious about these RMDs. Oh, they, yes. They took their RMDs in January, yep. in February, early March of 2020. They already took the money out. Yep. And here, um, IRS said, you didn't have to do that. And they said, well, that's not fair. Can we put the money back? IRS was asked that question. Mm -hmm. So IRS came out in May and said, if you took out your R, if you took an RMD in between February 1st, and you took it out between February 1st and May 15th, we will allow you to put the money back into your account, your, your retirement account. You can roll it into an IRA. We'll give you until July 15th to do that. Mm -hmm. That was the initial ruling in May. The only, the only people who could do this were those people who took out their RMDs between February 1st and March 27th. And it only was for retirement accounts. That is, yep. things like the TSP, traditional IRAs. If somebody out there inherited an IRA, let's say, from a parent. Sure. Mom, mom, died, mom died sometime before 2020. Okay? And um, you took you, that mom named you as beneficiary of her IRA. And what you did was you took that IRA and you transfer it to what is called an inherited, inherited, or uh, sometimes known as a death IRA. Yep. Now, beneficiary the Secure IRA Act, too. which we've talked about, got basically got rid of that for the option of getting lifetime distributions from your inherited IRA. Only certain people can can get lifetime distributions. But anybody who died, any 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 beneficiary who inherited an IRA for somebody who died before January first, two thousand twenty, was able to get what's called a stretch. They could get a stretch IRA, okay, stretch IRA. But let's get to the point here. IRA said the option of tra of rolling your I your inherited IRA RMD. Back is does not apply to inherited or death IRAs. That's what IRS said initially. Initially, mm -hmm. um, and there were the, the, so that didn't apply to an either an inherited traditional IRA. And many people are not aware of this. If somebody inherits a Roth IRA from mom or dad or another relative, they're also subject to uh, RMDs, a Roth IRA. You got to mm -hmm. take out a oh, certain yeah. amount each year, okay? IRS said, "Sorry, your the 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 the, the option to, to to roll that money back into the IRA um, does not does not apply does not does not apply to inherited Roth IRAs." That was the initial IRS ruling back in May. And mm -hmm. one other thing, Dan, that should be mentioned here: let's suppose there was an individual who uh, decided they're going to take their RMDs for 2020, and they, and they started back in, in January. And, and the way they do this is they take out a, a one-twelfth 
of their uh, RMD for the year each month. So they took yep. out one twelfth in January. They took out one twelfth in in February. They took out yep. one twelfth in early March. Oh yeah. And now there's and now IRS saying, okay, you want to you can put you can put the money back into an IRA. You can put the money back. You can roll it over. Just roll it over. But IRS has a rule. Yep. You can only do one rollover every three hundred and sixty five days. In other words, somebody who did this multiple RMDs over a couple months, the only rollover they could do would be for the first one. The second one they couldn't do. This was all part of IRS's initial rule. Uh, this was a notice they put out in May. This was sure. May. Um, so, now, where do we stand? Then IRS came out with a new notice. And this was issued on June 23rd, IRS Notice 2020-127. Yep. Dan, everything I just told you has been completely undone. What IRS said in Notice 2020-127 is, number one, no matter when you took your RMD from your traditional IRA or TSP or um, a qualified retirement plan like a 401k plan, you have until August 31st to trans to roll over that money either back to the retirement plan or to an IRA. IRS says you can make as many rollovers as you want. We're not going to limit it to one every 365 days. They completely um, said that that we're, we're going to forget that rule for this year, the once every 365-day rollover. That's and a big change. Another thing IRS said in notice 2020-127, if you are the be- beneficiary of an inherit, you have an inherited or death IRA, you also can roll the money back. Everything I told you initially, yep. IRS said, we're going to undo it. Just kidding. Everybody can roll their money back into their accounts and therefore not be taxed. That's real good news, and you have until August 31st. That's very good news. Very, very, very good news. Okay, let's keep pressing on because uh, your, uh, your next article talks about changes coming from the Secure and Cares Act and the impact for retirement plans and IRAs for folks that may have passed away. And, and that, that, unfortunately, is part of life and, and perhaps sometimes more part of life in, in a pandemic situation. So we, we, we hope to the good Lord that, that none of our people listening encounter this. But if, if some of these uh, points help you, then we're glad we did it. Uh, so you gave, you gave four scenarios. So let's, uh, let's just go through them. Uh, you talked about the first person made an IRA contribution in the year that they passed away. So what? Okay, so example. Let's suppose um, somebody made an IRA contribution for the year 2019. And we mentioned earlier today that um, it, uh, with, a, with, an IRA, with an IRA contribution, with a traditional IRA contribution, it can be deductible or non-deductible, or in Roth yep. IRA, any type of IRA, any, any type of IRA contribution. Um, so the person made an IRA contribution and reported on their taxes as maybe deductible. If it was non-deductible, they filed a form 8606. Again, this is a traditional IRA. Maybe they made a Roth IRA contribution. They didn't have to report on their taxes. But here's the point, Dan. By the time they, 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 they filed their taxes, but then they passed away before the filing deadline, July, gotcha. in this case, July 15, 2020. So IRS has asked the question, can they still make that contribution for the year of death? What mm-hmm. do you think IRS said? Uh, my guess would be no. You're right, Dan. IRS said no. And the IRS's rationale was, and this goes back to, actually, they were asked 
about 32 years ago, in 1987, about this. Um, can somebody make an IRA contribution in the year they pass away? And IRS said no, because um, in reality, they don't need the money. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they're going to heaven, God willing. Yep. And they really don't need the money. I mean, you really can't argue with the IRS logic on that one. Oh, I've, I've never seen a U-Haul on the back of a hearse. <laughs> <laughs> so I agree with That's you. That's true. So um, now what, what's interesting about this is um, let's suppose the person who passed away had a spouse, has a spouse, uh-huh. had a spouse. Um, you know, when it comes to IRA contributions, it only takes one earned income, earned an income. One, only one spouse has to have a W-2. Right. So let's say the one who passed away had the W-2, and then there is the non-working spouse. So both spouses made IRA contributions. The one who passed away, the IRA contribution has to be has to be um, has to come out has to has to be um, withdrawn. Okay, mm-hmm. has to withdrawn. But the non-working spouses, a uh, non-working spouse, uh, can certainly make the IRA contribution because he or she's still living. This is what the IRS said. Gotcha. Um, I also want to point out that let's say somebody did somebody passed away for 2019. They made a deductible IRA contribution for 2019, but then they have since passed away. Um, and on their tax return for 2019, it was reported as a deductible IRA contribution. Then their taxes are going to have to be amended to remove the IRA contribution. Gotcha. Okay. And then also, if there was a non-deductible IRA contribution, they're going to have to amend their taxes to remove the Form 8606 because the, the contribution cannot be made. That should be Got pointed it. out. That should be pointed out. Okay, so your scenario number two has the IRA owner passing away in their RMD years. So what changed there? All right. Um, somebody who is um, over 70 and a half, in this case, because we're still under some people over 70 and a half, some passes away and they're over 70 and a half and they're required to take an RMD from, you know, whether it's a qualified retirement account or it could be a traditional IRA, they have to take an RMD, but they pass away before they took their RMD for that particular year. Gotcha. So the question comes up, do they still, does the estate have to take, or the, the beneficiary, somebody, family, have to take that RMD for the person to seize? IRS says yes, but if the person passed away in 2020 and has not taken his or her, the one who passed away has not ta- had not taken his or her RMD before he or she passed away, then the family does not have to take the RMD. Why? Because what did IRS rule Cares about Act. RMDs for 2020? Yep, you can Nobody skip has to take them. Yep, okay. So this is a result of the CARES Act. And your next one up is for the IRA beneficiary who passes away after December 31st, 2019. So we're talking about somebody who passes away in 2020. I got a hunch this is something with the CARES Act too. So what's the change um, there? Actually, it's more with the SECURE Act. Oh, really? The SECURE okay. Act. Under the, uh, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, under the SECURE Act, um, anybody who inherits an IRA for somebody who dies after uh, December 31st, 2019, uh, cannot get what's called a lifetime distribution from the inherited IRA. They, uh, the, 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 the so-called stretch IRA is gone for for most beneficiaries. There are some exceptions. Um, uh, these are the ones who can do, do the stretch IRA are called eligible beneficiary eligible eligible beneficiaries. They include spouses, uh, I think siblings who are with, who are within ten years um, of the um, age of the of the deceased IRA owner, uh, disabled beneficiaries. Those are some exceptions, but. Anybody else, including adult children, has to withdraw has to withdraw the inherited IRA within ten years of yep. the death of the IRA owner, and this includes both a traditional and a Roth IRA. All right, mm-hmm. but 
anybody who inherited an IRA from somebody who died prior to January 1st, 2020, still gets the stretch, gets, is a, able to do the so-called stretch IRA in which the IRA distributions can be distributed over the beneficiary's life expectancy. That's why they call it a stretch IRA. You can stretch it out over this beneficiary's life, um, uh, life expectancy. I mean, think about this, Dan. You, you named, uh, let's say, a grandchild who's 10 years old as the beneficiary of your IRA. You yep. died back in 2000, let's say 2019. Your, your grandchild is 10 years old. Your grandchild has a life expectancy, as let's say, of 85 years. That grandchild will be getting a distribution from the IRA for 75 years. Wow. Yep. That's a nice, that's a nice gift from grandma and grandpa. Okay? Yep. Well, here's the situation. If the beneficiary, such a beneficiary, somebody who's a beneficiary of an IRA from someone who died before January 1st, 2020, if the beneficiary dies, mm -hmm. and there is now going to be a new beneficiary, here it's 2020, we're after, we're, it's after December 31st, 2019, then the new beneficiary has to go according to the rules for this, uh, on, that, that were put out by the SECURE Act. Namely, oh, they ouch. have to take the money out within 10 years, 10 years of the death of, uh, of the 10 years, within 10 years of their life. 10 years. They have 10 gotcha. years from the day that the, 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 the first beneficiary died to get that money paid out to them. This is no longer a stretch IRA. Now it's a, a 10 year IRA. Now they don't have to take out an RMD every year. But after 10 years, they got to clean it out. Yep. All right, so last but not least, number four. I can't imagine this because you wouldn't let it happen in your practice. We wouldn't let it happen in our practice. But if an IRA owner has no named beneficiary, so what happens there? Ooh, not a good deal, Dan. I agree. Um, 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 uh, these are so-called, the IRA has a, uh, the, 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 um, the, the, IRA has a non-designated beneficiary. Um, they're basically non-designated beneficiaries are beneficiaries that are not individuals. You did not aim, name an individual as beneficiary. And that would, that would include an estate, a charity, or a non-qualifying trust. Gotcha. Okay? Now, typically, a non-designated non -designated beneficiary comes with an IRA or retirement plan, and this would include also not only an IRA, but also a retirement plan, such as the TSB, does not name a beneficiary, and, and the IRA or retirement plan passes to the estate, to passes to the estate of the deceased IRA or retirement plan owner. So in that case, what's going to happen depends on when the IRA owner or the retirement plan owner uh, died. If the IRA or retirement plan owner died before what is called their required beginning date. Now, what is the required beginning date? Well, for somebody who was born before um, um, July 1st, 1949, the required beginning date is April 1st, following the year they become... Um, um, uh, age 70 and a half. Mm -hmm. If the, if the uh, IRA owner was born before July 1st, 1949, then the required beginning date is April 1st, following the year they become age 62. So here's what it comes down to. If death occurred before the required beginning date, then the IRA would it, or retirement plan payout would have to be paid out within five years of the death of the IRA or retirement plan owner. They have to pay it out entirely within five years to the, to the estate. And then the estate would, distrib would distribute it, and whoever's going to get it is going to pay tax. Five mm -hmm. years is not a long time. I agree. Years. If the IRA or retirement plan owner uh, died after their so-called required beginning date, then the beneficiary can take payouts over what have been the deceased IRA owners or our retirement plans owners' single remaining life expectancy had he or she lived. Gotcha. They have a single life expectancy. Now, I did a little research on this, Dan. 
Mm-hmm. And I notice that if you go to the IRS table, the life expectancy table, that's where it's all found. The single life expectancy table has a longer payout compared to what's called the IRS's uniform distribution table, which is used mm-hmm. to determine RMDs. So in reality, the, the person who inherits this IRA or retirement plan will get a longer payout compared to had the person, um, let's say, been named as beneficiary and they had to take it out over according to the IRS's uniform lifetime. Now, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm sure this was a slip-up. I'm not going to tell anybody about this. This was a slip-up on Congress's part but when they when designed this rule. But I just, I just did a little research on this, that in reality you're better off na- not naming an, a beneficiary in this sense because you'll get a longer payout. Your beneficiary will get a longer payout if the person dies after the required beginning date. Just something, just something I checked into. Sure. Well, Ed, I, I do not know how you keep up with all this stuff, you know, in addition to your schedule of writing on benefits and things like that. But uh, uh, on behalf of all feds, I'm glad you do. And brother, I am grateful that you do it with us. So uh, once again, Ed, great stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, folks, folks, that's a wrap. Uh, Ed will be back as we continue to work together to reach teach, and serve you. We are serving those who serve. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast on our YouTube channel and Spotify. Please remember to share it with your friends, strangers, even throw it to an enemy. Okay, make some make some new friends. Uh, seriously, folks, we have regular listeners right now. I can see you out there logging on. It, it, it does my heart good. So think of one of your Fed friends and text them the link. And text them the link to st, stwserve.com. Because, drum roll, we had to pause our live seminars for the safety and well-being of Ed, us, our, our whole Fed family, and now, I'd been promising it, we are live and full bore. We have, we have virtual Ed ready to go. It is live. Uh, so you go to stwserve.com. You will see right there, landing page, webinar button, nice, pretty blue, click it. We have eight unique webinars that are awesome. The guru comes to you. This is fantastic because literally you're you're not and and you all were fantastic coming and spending, you know, eight hours with us at our face-to-face seminars and they were always fantastic. Well, now that's been broken down into smaller bites uh, and, and it is a rolling cycle. So... If, if you look, you know, oh, wow, they just did first. Don't worry about it. It's coming up again. Oh, wow, they just did CRS and CSRS offset. Don't worry. It's coming up again. We're going to keep that cycle going. And if there are ones that, that by your demand, you tell us that these are important to you, we'll double up on them. We will get you the content you need. And these things are dynamite. We've got, uh, we've got live Q&A in it. So, uh, and it's, it's a really, really unique format, so you don't want to miss it. But again, the guru comes to you. Don't, uh, don't pass up on this. So it's live webinars with Ed helping us to reach, teach, and serve you and reach, teach, and serve you where you are. Reach you where you are, teach you where you are, and above all, serve you where you are. So go to servingthisservant.com, click the blue webinar box. Share that page with your friends. They will thank you. So, wrapping up for Ed, the crew at Serving Those Who Serve, and me, Dan Sype. Good luck, Godspeed, and above all, I see you, West Battle. I hear you, West Battle, stealing my tagline for your uh, your webinars, and and that's great. Wes is uh, Wes is one of our stars there, along with Ed. Uh, but I hear you doing that. But above all, remember, it's your Fed life. Make it a great one, because you deserve it. Stay well, everyone. We are out. Thank you for listening to the Fed Life Podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of serving those who serve or Raymond James. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. 
securities offered through Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Raymond James Financial Services Advisors Incorporated, serving those who serve as not a registered broker or dealer and is independent of Raymond James Financial Services. Raymond James is not affiliated and does not endorse the opinions or services of any of the quoted professionals or their respective firms. Any opinions are those of Dan Sipe and not necessarily those of RJFS or Raymond James. This case study is for illustrated purposes only. Individual cases will vary. Neither Raymond James Financial Services nor any Raymond James Financial Advisor renders advice on tax issues. These matters should be discussed with the appropriate professional. Investing involves risk and you may incur a profit or loss regardless of strategy selected, including diversification and asset allocation. Raymond James is not affiliated with and does not endorse the opinions or services of the quoted professionals or their respective organizations.